Okay. Good evening, everybody. I think it's uh, nearly 10 past uh, 5.30, so we can start. Uh, at this, this nice time in the day when we meet for the new beginning of this course of human-computer interaction. Uh, it's, uh, you, as you know, it's a new offering. It's a new course. So it's been being uh, you know, started only this uh, academic year. Um, and uh, the teachers that will uh, that you will uh, see in this place uh, and in this course uh, are uh, myself, uh, I'm uh, Fulvio Corno, and uh, Luigi De Russis, who is standing here for your pleasure. And uh, um, so we will, uh, you know, um, spend time with you in the class and in the labs. Uh, and I will try to describe you, of course, in the first class today is mainly about uh, how the course is organized, uh, uh, what are the contents uh, and stuff like that. Okay. I have a number in my mind, which is uh, 67, should be the number of people that I see on the portale enrolled in the course. Uh, I don't know, is there anybody here which is uh, not officially enrolled there? Because, so there's some, some people, okay, not many. So probably we still have a margin of error of 10% uh, more or less uh, people. Now th this is important because in the, I will ask you in, in within one week uh, to form some groups uh, for the exam. So it's important to know who is ac really you know, attending the course. Okay, so for today, uh, this is the more or less the, the outline and I will start with some uh, uh, question about uh, what uh, does a human computer interaction course has to do in uh, an, an engine engineering degree okay engineers are hard people no are very rude people nerdy people they don't care about interfaces they don't care about the users they only care about uh, squeezing the last bit or the last uh, nanosecond for what they are doing or the last uh, microwatt or whatever is your favorite measure of performance um, actually this is what you are doing uh, in uh, actually all the other courses that you take in this degree so you are uh, st you are studying studying databases you are studying networks you're studying uh, distributed systems uh, robotics uh, vlsi programming and so on so all the foundations these six pictures more or less try to recall are the main foundations of the computer engineering degree and uh, these foundations allow us will allow you to build and create and develop uh, any kind of device uh, application from the arranging from the hardware to the software side uh, so we try try to study uh, all the technologies involved in building computer applications well computer applications uh, are more and more embedded in some other kinds of objects like cars uh, or tvs or whatever but we know there's a computer inside okay so this is something that we already do hmm? the missing link in this picture are the users so all these devices these applications that we are building are for somebody to use okay there's a minor part of a uh, software applications that just run by themselves uh, unattended without any user interface but it's just uh, the minority most of the applications are built uh, because some user needs to use them hmm? user using is the same verb it's the same word okay so actually uh, what uh, we don't learn in the other courses is how all the aspects of design so all the technology that we learn can link or are connected in some way to the end users of the application if we leave that to chance okay you you will never leave to the chance the design of a chip okay let's design it then maybe it works we don't need testing okay we don't need debugging we don't need fa fault tolerance in the networks and so on because okay probably it will work okay this is something that we risk doing with the users we develop some system which is full of very uh, you know uh, precise technology but maybe in the design we forget about the user and we just hope that yes maybe it will work all or the user will figure out how it works I build my system and then it solves the problem of the user being able to learn how to use it 
uh, we want to change this perspective uh, and uh, understand that uh, you the user experience is part of the design okay when we design system is not is not just cost it's not just area it's not just performance it's not just uh, speed or whatever but it's also user experience which is one of the design constraints one of the design goals hmm? so how we do that we learn how to design hardware we learn languages we learn methods and the same is uh, for the design of the user interfaces which is not graphical design which is not uh, being able to write uh, to draw nice icons huh? but it's more about the interaction flow of the user <laughs> and uh, this interaction is mediated by some devices the input and output devices so the mouse the screen the microphone uh, all the, inter the user interface devices so how we, uh, we exploit them to create this interaction and ultimately how do we ensure that people when they use our system okay they maybe joy is too much as a word but the they enjoy or they don't get frustrated mainly with the system okay i know that in these days all of you has spent some hours of frustration with the portalita didactica in defining and yes that is an example uh, of something that we could oh could have been designed in a better way huh? in a way that is more you know uh, consistent with how you would expect it hmm? and uh, uh, there are two quotations that uh, i like uh, is that uh, deep underground in the core of every software developer there is a graphic designer huh, that wants to get out and say okay i'm also good at graphical design okay try to kill that that uh, um, personality don't let it out because uh, it will be uh, um, a problem as we see so the the, the message is uh, the mindset of a programmer is not the right one for thinking about user interfaces user interfaces is not exposing to the users all the functionality of my program it's not that it's not what we want huh? it's exposing to the user we will learn it throughout throughout the course uh, exposing to the user the functions that the user expects and likes and wants to perform okay and uh, it's not uh, it's not you know, automatic say we are from working from inside the system hmm, we see too many details and we don't see many processes and this will you know, uh, create ugly ugly interfaces hmm. and uh, the two other problems in computer science are people you are not computers are people uh it's very hard to create a computer system interacting with people and it's also hard to convince a computer scientists or programmer that this is actual is an, is an actual problem hmm? and of course the plus or minus one problems are always there but these are a couple of examples that i put from from the internet about uh, user interfaces designed by programmers okay design is a big word here uh, created by programmers uh, you know wget okay wget for getting for uh, querying uh, uh, http servers for downloading stuff and there was one very you know uh, good programmer that says okay I, I don't remember all the flags so let's build a graphical interface for invoking uh, the wget uh, command and he came out with this monster uh, here well actually there are all the possible uh, options but you don't know where to start from even if you already know wget you don't you already know the command line tool but okay what wh where do i start so what start start what start start here or it's a batch file or exit is a non-conventional place here and uh, how do these different 
specifications interact with each other are they ex exclusive are they in or are they in end nobody knows okay so this is an interface that does the job gives you access to a lot of functions but it doesn't tell you how to do that how to interpret it so i'm constantly puzzling questioning what will happen when i click this button so remember this question what will happen when i do this this is a question that we should delete from the user's minds our goal actually is to let the user use the system without questioning it's so easy so evident so obvious what they have to do that they don't need to ask the question themselves hmm? this is one on the point they will go into oh this is another example i i'm i'm sure this has been made on purpose so it's not a real application probably but i'm not sure but uh, it's a file manager with a lot of other stuff hmm? so we want of course to avoid this because they give uh, all the power but none of the control and power without control is nothing hmm? so how we will uh, uh, try to hmm, attack this problem well uh, the course has two st streams that of course interact with each other one is more let me pass this word theoretical so we have to learn some methods of working some heuristics some criteria some evaluation methods and so on something that will help us in designing so uh, like you are okay it's not like uh, learning a, a programming language but it's more like pro learning some programming patterns so we are we will not focus on programming here but how to apply knowledge that has been hardly gained uh, during the years by other people and by designers by other programmers and so on so a lot of techniques uh, and uh, processes so how do we ensure in the process you just came out from last year's engineer software engineering where you where you uh, spoke a lot about software engineering processes and how do we ensure that this process is also take into account the usability of our systems uh, we will talk uh, also it's a couple of weeks about uh, well, let's call them modern interaction techniques so a lot of human computer interaction is on the desktop in desktop interaction model okay so windows mouse pointer keyboards and so on but nowadays uh, it, it, it's becoming more and more mar not marginal but less uh, dominant this kind of interaction because mobile because video games uh, because voice interaction uh, because all of this new stuff that is coming out and we ne we need to integrate them in in our system in a usable way and uh, so we will learn this stuff uh, and uh, in parallel we'll try to apply what we learn especially the process the design process we learn and uh, the design techniques the methods that we learn we we'll try to apply them to a project okay so every course has a project here and uh, um, so the idea is that as we progress with these, these different steps uh, we will apply them to the project of your choice hmm? we'll talk about the project rules uh, and constraints uh, later uh, okay this is just uh, a nightmare list uh, of uh, of the same topics uh, just uh, to have a look about uh, the, the the weight the relative weight uh, of uh, of the different topics of course this 30 percent uh, is mostly the lab hours uh, time in the laboratories that we have uh, weekly every week uh, uh, that in which uh, we in most of the cases in most of the weeks actually in most of the labs uh, you will have time to develop your project so it's not an, a lab in which you have assignments for the sake of assignments but uh, uh, every week we will have a step in which you will develop that step for your project hmm? so we try to help you in progressing with the with the, um, with the project itself okay so actually the learning method uh, is mainly project and, and problem based so we start we I th we think that uh, the main uh, of course we need some theory we need some methods to apply but the main learning 
uh, activity is uh, comes out from your working on the project so you can as always when you, when you try stuff and it doesn't work uh, and you're trying to understand why and improve in that process you learn okay um, as people say you cannot teach computer engineering you must help people to learn okay so I, uh, programming and computer engineering in general is something that you have to learn by yourself i cannot i cannot teach it to you i can just help you in in this process okay um okay uh, we'll try also from the uh, practical point of view uh, to use uh, say modern tools and technologies so no blackboards no emails please and some uh, and so we'll try to use some tools uh, that are uh, uh, let's say normal for teams of software developers since uh, we are uh, working in teams uh, let's try to use some teamwork tools okay um this is the timetable the schedule you already know about that one word about the lab so we have uh, scheduled uh, three hours in the lab inf we don't know whether the second hour will be needed or not so if the number of students remains more or less the the same number as we have today we will not need uh, the second hour so it will just be from 10 to 11 30. maybe in some labs uh, that requires some maybe longer activity we will use both slot, slots but it will not be a division in in, uh, in uh, team one and team two but just uh, a longer lab no? you know that lab, lab inf is always difficult to start on time because the previous course uh, you have to kick people out and so on and uh, okay so i let me wait a few days uh, until we settle on, on this decision okay if the number of students will not increase too much uh, then this second hour will not be used in any case uh, this thursday is still holiday for you uh, because the lab will start only on the on the 10th of october so in the second week of the course okay okay about the material you always want something to read and to print and to have and uh, so all the information about the course uh, including the slides uh, including the videos of the lectures including other maybe links uh, uh, all the information that you will need for progressing through the project will be on this website i'm not using the portal didattica not just because i hate it but also uh, because there's some people which is not uh, already enrolled uh, with all the shift from the first and second year and so on so i don't uh, i don't want to have an additional constraint of uh, being uh, uh, enabled to log into the portal uh, this life life is too short for passwords okay and um, so we put everything here hmm? free to use and to see uh, the lectures will uh, be published on youtube uh, and usually i do that uh, right after the end of the class or just uh, the morning after because don't don't let me stay until eight or nine in the evening just for uploading that and uh, we, they will also appear on the portale uh, because we'll push them also to the pipeline process implied pipeline but usually they appear first on youtube because the process is simpler hmm? oh it's more usable i should say uploading to youtube rather than uploading to the portal of the polytechnic and uh, we also use uh, an organization in uh, in github on which uh, basically we will create a repository for your projects okay so you are, are you all familiar with github yes are you yes you, they already formatted you on that in the previous course very good okay and uh, about communication i checked uh, before coming here there were there are already probably 31 people that already um, registered to this uh, slack group it means that uh, other 40 people are, or 35 people are missing so please register to this uh, uh, e this uh, slack uh, channel the invitation link uh, is in the portal della didattica and also on the course website probably and i'm not sure no, only the portal the didactica yeah because no, we don't want everybody from the world uh, to link but you can pass it among yourself and uh, yourselves or your friends uh, anybody who wants to join uh, just join this uh, this group so that we will manage all the communication via slack 
so don't write emails we will not reply to emails uh, concerning uh, the course if you want to give me money of course you can write and um, the rules uh, are very simple uh, we have three main channels in the slack group one is the general channel it's a channel where we can write uh, and you can only read and be silent on it okay so uh, for communication from the teacher to the group there is a discussion channel where you can write questions ideas problems okay and uh, we will monitor this channel and try to reply as soon as possible to any issue that comes out so if you want to ask a question that has to do with with the course generally so try don't write a personal message to me or to luigi uh, write it if it's not a personal issue write it in the discussion channel so that everybody maybe can benefit from the solution of the of the issue and uh, we can see so we promise to to answer to reply quickly to this uh, to any issue that is presented in this channel random is a channel as the name says for any kind of other discussion maybe information that you have you found something interesting uh, uh it's your uh, i don't know uh birthday and or, or any other free discussion that you want to to start on the group so we we of course we will see what you write here so be polite and uh, but uh, uh, we usually don't reply there or not not always okay then what we suggest uh, is to create private groups uh, for your groups for your uh, group uh, project groups so the, the the platform is open you can create groups uh, in which you only uh, only the members of the group uh, will uh, will work will communicate okay so just uh, be sure that from how, how slack works uh, we cannot read uh, anything that you write in private messages among yourselves and uh, you can we cannot read anything that you can write in uh, in private groups so you, you can feel safe and say any anything you, you, you want hmm? uh, we don't have fake identities to infiltrate the group yet okay so this is not a security course okay so that's for the uh, for the communication uh, for development uh, we really okay when the groups are formed and uh, the group topics are defined um, we'll try uh, we'll create repositories on github for each group and uh, uh, we suggest uh, or we strongly suggest uh, that you, re you really use github for development okay so no big applause at the end of the course uh, of all the material that you exchange uh, i don't know via usb keys or via emails uh, don't we don't do that okay uh, so really try to, to use the platform uh, you already probably have a github account so you already know that it's free for you as a student and blah 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 okay um, we will create by default one repository per group we will create private repository so it's your choice whether you want to make it public or not uh, if you need more repositories than one maybe you want to split the pro the, the project in different parts uh, it's no problem just ask uh, we will create them okay um, we will not uh, constantly monitor what you are doing so we are not spending the night in checking your githubs uh, it's just for you but in some moments uh, you we, ha we will have to submit some material on github okay so there will be be those moments we we will check uh, the submission material uh, unfortunately we don't have a book uh, for the course uh, well unfortunately we don't have only one book for the course uh, we have several ones so we'll need to we we'll pick uh, uh, several uh, or different topics from different books uh, i will show a list here and um, and we'll try to synthesize or summarize uh, the most important point in the slides uh, but if you want of course you can go to the um, to the books uh, I have a mic so I cannot say where you find the book um, and uh, okay so this is the material uh, as normally uh, the, the reason why there are no uh, suitable textbooks is that in this sector as many others uh, technology advances very quickly so if you write uh, a book about uh, I don't know the design system in Android uh, last year then this year will be already changed or the different or the best practices in interaction in a given with a given you know a voice interaction after last year's uh, you know big increase in uh, vocal assistance uh, 
the patterns of interaction are changed. So if, we, if a book from 2014, 15 is already old hmm, and it's very complex to, to, to have uh, updated material. So maybe there are some articles, some papers that we can suggest to you. But mainly, mainly the material we take are for these books here, uh, which are classical textbooks. Uh, um, this one is uh, on the third edition, 2004. We always, uh, it's, it's not bad. We always hope that it's writing a new version, but uh, this is actually nothing new is coming out. This one you see that's already at the sixth edition. It's more current, this one, 2016. And these two are, have different approaches, hmm? focus on different parts of the process, but they are the main two sources of information that we'll discuss here. Um, with, uh, together with uh, the Banyan one, which is also quite current, not really, 2014, uh, which is more about, the, um, more focused about the actual design, so the design, the, the creation of the system. So less uh, theoretical framework and more practical advice. Uh, from this, this book is not, will not use very much, uh, or except only just to say one, one part of the course, uh, is more for researchers okay so if you want to be a researcher in the human computer interaction we'll tell you all the quicks or the methods or the all the um, the instructions on how to create experiments and do evaluations and so on okay we uh, we don't have much time to delve into that detail we'll only uh, extract some parts okay and then these two books are not uh, say classical textbooks but uh, they are I, I suggest them for inspiration and for background uh, let's start from the second one uh, don't make me think uh, it's a very short book so the author still track this is a, it's a three four fifth edition i don't know uh, it's re has been revised sometimes uh, the, the goal of the author would say uh, was to write a book uh, that you can read uh, on a plane trip so in three four hours you can finish the book the other ones are from six to eight hundred pages long so unless uh, your flight is very very long you will not make it and uh, um, and so it's a very practical very direct so not very theoretical nor very well framed but it gives a lot of uh, practical advice and examples and the title is actually is uh, suggested primary usability law the first usability law according to steve krug is uh, don't make me think we'll discuss it uh, next uh, tomorrow actually um, which which is a, a an easy to remember summary whenever you see a user i don't know climbing onto a tram and seeing the the machine for stamping the ticket and trying to un understand where they need to put uh, the ticket for stamping it uh, they're thinking so there's some obstacle to usability something is wrong okay try to figure it when, when you walk when you open a door when you switch a light on do you need to think or does it just come come automatically spontaneously instinctively hmm? we need to compress all the interaction into something that you don't feel you don't think about you move it from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind because it's so obvious you cannot miss it you cannot do it in any other way and this uh, uh and the other uh, book is uh the basics uh, of of uh, of all these disciplines the book from norman is it's it's uh it's nice to read it's a bit long but it's very nice to read uh, and uh, the design of everyday things uh, which is uh, a title that doesn't tell much you probably know it by the italian title no in Italian, the title has been translated. It's one, the one case in history where the Italian title is better than the English one. And uh, uh, in Italian, it's uh, La Caffettiera del Masochista. Okay, so a coffee machine for masochists because you see that this coffee pot uh, actually needs to, it will, uh, uh, oops, will burn you when you try to pour your coffee into the, into the cup. So there's no, no way avoiding that. So, so, and when you will burn your, your hand, you will ask yourself what's wrong with me <laughs> okay what did they do wrong 
okay it's it's obvious that you are, you did nothing wrong it's a designer that did something wrong so this is again is the mindset that we must have when something is difficult to do i am not the stupid it's not the blame is not on the user who is stupid who doesn't understand what he needs to do the blame is always on the designer of the system that created something ambiguous dangerous difficult so on hmm? and uh, so these are uh, okay of course the, the the book uh, goes on into the mental model for avoiding that and so on but the the main messages hmm, i think these are these are we will build the course around these two big messages so it's never the fault of the user we are the designers we are the responsibility of making things easy to use and impossible to use wrongly try to avoid errors or mistakes that the user could do and it's not a merit or the method of the users it's always the designer okay so we have that in control probably okay practical information about the exam uh, you probably already re read that from from the from the course description before deciding to enroll uh, the, the exam is um, split in two parts one theoretical part uh, which is uh, actually a written text that counts 40% uh, or 13 points uh, over the total and with a minimum number of seven points to be considered valid and then the, is the, there's the evaluation of the projects uh, which accounts for the remaining 20 points or 60% 60, 60 of the total okay and uh, we allow giving the two parts in different dates uh, as long as they are in the same academic year mm -hmm. so in the four dates of, of, of the year so it's uh, in we are in the first semester so it's febru uh, january february and february march uh, and june and september we you can choose to give the theoretical part in one and the, and present the project in the other as you like okay in se after the, the september exam we will reset all the previous scores so we'll, everything will start over with a new project with new groups and so on okay um okay so this was the main information i will follow by some more detailed uh, discussion about the course projects uh, or oh, do you have any questions at, the po at this point no do you understand my english yeah usually it's in, uh, it's bad enough for the italian and good enough for the foreigners so it's um, um okay about the project so practical information to to get started which is okay the main source of learning as we know and the main source of uh, scores for the exams also so the two are matched and um, these are projects to be developed uh, during the semester not after the semester okay we hope usually and we'll try to give you intermediate uh, deadlines to help you progress during the semester uh, the goal of course is to have uh, uh, some excellent experience uh, with some with the application of the human center design process so we we make a lot of work words uh, and statements uh, about uh, how the process should look like but until you apply it you don't uh, you don't uh, actu appreciate actually some of the steps and uh, of course this part uh, requires you to be able to build the system and what we thought uh, is that probably the the easiest way of building some interactive system is to use uh, web technologies so you already came from a course of distributed programming last year we are where you already have some some basics uh, about uh, web development uh, uh, so the idea is uh, to build uh, a web application as a project the focus is not on building a web application of course but it's on the process of building it and on the usability of the result okay so it's not a complete a full application say building a prototype 
web application. Some which is, which is by definition incomplete. It doesn't have everything. It's normal because we only or we mainly want to focus on the parts of the application that uh, impact the user. Of course, the front end uh, should be practically complete. Oh, for the back end, we can take shortcuts, a lot of shortcuts. Uh, we don't need to deliver a full application. Uh, this word uh, prototype is very, very important in the human center design processes. Because if you want to start testing the system months and months before the system is finished, you need something intermediate even imprecise even partial that you can start using for testing it for evaluating with the users and so on hmm? so actually we will follow this test with uh, refining uh, or adding uh, you know more value more interactivity and so on to the different product we'll start with very simple prototypes some paper prototypes with paper and pen and then they will be gradual and we will already use them uh, for evaluation and then we will move them and evolve them into something that we should, which looks like more a complete system, even if it nev is never required to be complete. And uh, just to make the thing more interesting, the project uh, should include also some technology beyond WIMP. Uh, WIMP is a Windows icon, mouse, and pointers. So not just a classical web application with links and clicks and forms to fill and so on, and social streams and, and stuff, uh, but also some technology which uh, every year will change. Okay? It's in the next slide, but I can tell you because you are my friends. It's this year the, te the technology will be uh, voice, actually. Hmm? So, a web application in which we will integrate some voice interaction. Okay? Um, using the toolkits that today is already available, so it's not. Uh, it's not uh, too complex to do that and we'll, uh, we'll spend uh, a couple of weeks in the lab in learning that and this project is not just a web application but it's for the sake of writing some code but but we should imagine something that uh, actually solves uh, a real problem to real people if we don't know the people that will use uh, our application and we not, don't know the tasks or the problems or the goal these people have we are not doing anything about usability we are writing code for exercising maybe but it's not a real application so we always we need always to start from the population target population okay who is going to use our hypothetical applic web application and what are they do are they using it for hmm? these are the first two questions that you have to to, to discuss in, in this week among yourself so what what are we going to build hmm? and who is going to use that and the answer is not everybody but is a specific part of the population with specific characteristics or maybe more than one why not it's an application for students for travelers for sports people for uh, a category of people that share a goal these people want to do or are interested in doing something and uh, the application will help them in doing that task okay so in, inter in user interaction, as well as, as in marketing, identifying the target is the first point. You, otherwise, you, you risk of being too generic and say, okay, I'm doing something which everybody can use, but nobody wants to use. Hmm? I need to restrict the target so that in that specific target, they will, they will want to use it because it will solve one of their problems then all the task of course will be to make, make a, a system that will make solving the problem easy and fun and engaging and so on hmm? it's the how which is part of the uh, design process um, so this already said that we most of the work will be during the lab hours uh, including the nights uh, did i say that there's some extra lab hours during the nights at your home 
and um, okay and we try to follow actually the the the, the, the process during the course so <coughs> there will be an interleave between what we discuss in the class and what we do in the lab that's also one of the reasons why we are not uh, you know if you check with the books uh, with the textbooks we are not progressing linearly with how the book is organized because we want to give the information that is needed for the lab for the practical work and uh, in some points we will ask you from for some deliverables or some documents uh, to, to send uh, I, I show you the list in a moment so uh, the project is a group project is not a personal or individual project groups should be made of uh, four students each of course if the final number is not divisible by four uh, we kill somebody or or we allow some uh, some three people group or let's let's see let's uh, solve it but we generally let's try to stick to this number okay uh, and uh, every group uh, will propose a topic so it's your choice propose whatever you do oh uh, sorry whatever you want as long as it's a well-defined web application that includes some voice technology and some detailed uh, requirement that you will see today okay uh, but if the group has a shared interest probably they can propose uh, something about that interest these deliverables that we ask uh, throughout the course they are not 27 okay therefore uh, are part of the exam so in the 60 percent in the 20 point that you have the exam part of that uh, will be the, the grading and say of the deliverables but more more importantly okay who cares about the exam uh, more importantly we will give you feedback about these deliverables so in these different steps uh, we'll say okay this is good we, we, st we always start with this is good but uh, and we try to give you suggestions or point out some critical points some issues in the work you did at the, up to that point then it's up to you of course to act on this feedback uh, and maybe correct something um, but it's important for us also not to discover something when, when at the end of the course that something went wrong uh, since the beginning okay and uh, at the end of the course uh, so in the um, practical part of the exam uh, we will ask you to do some uh, short presentation so you submit the code on github so it's, uh, it should be already there there should not no extra work for that you will make a demo so we go into the lab you show us our site our um, the website and present it so do a short presentation about what it what it's about how it works uh, the design choices we made and so on we'll give you some not a template but at least a checklist uh, of the information that we want to uh, see in the presentation and the discussion uh, discussion basically it's us asking you question clarification explanation about what you did and why you did that okay, in that way um, all the students in the group should be present in the same uh, in the same session because we also need we need to do that uh, we need to check that the four people actually have a good knowledge of the work that has been done okay so they meet may, they might be, must be there at the, at the same time uh, while the the other part the written part you can take it in whatever order or grouping uh, you want okay but for the presentation try to agree on a date uh, where you all can be present uh, okay these are the uh, nothing new about the evaluation criteria about how we make up the points uh, um, that is a mix of course of the deliverables that you submitted the correctness the completeness and the presentation there uh, you I, I i don't want to we uh, we didn't commit yet to some numbers so how, how much how many points are for the deliverables how many are for the presentation Mm, we'll, we'll decide it uh, later in the course but maybe 50 50 50 or something like that mm, just to have an idea <coughs> um, in the assignment of the of the teams uh, use slack maybe to or we are in the same room but you can also use Slack to, to seek for people if you need a four person to do or you need uh, to join a group and so on uh we may, may well, I, probably we may help uh, in informing the groups but uh, mm, we we don't want to interact too much or to force somebody into some group because it will create more problem than it solves usually okay so try to to 
find a solution among yourselves okay if you have some problems of course you can tell us let's try not to change the teams uh, during the semester okay so if you need to fight uh, try to wait after the end of the semester after you give the exam then you can do whatever you want but trying to split or, or recombine a group during the course uh, as every group is working on a different topic is very is very bad <laughs> especially very bad for the people that will receive the person because they already started some work and somebody so we, we really don't like it hmm? okay uh, okay good up you already said that uh, 27 times so as i said uh, uh, the topic uh, can be any web application um, as long as it includes some uh, voice-based interaction technique hmm? it, it includes it doesn't meet, need it doesn't need to be exclusively a voice interaction system so imagine a use case uh, a, an application that would benefit for some voice interaction which is please please don't be a chatbot for user assistance for oh, do you need some help you can write no okay that is completely as you say I, today uh, in every website uh, you open the web page uh, after you click through 27 cookies uh, and uh, and gdpr and uh, other uh, um, permissions uh, then uh, you 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 are welcomed by welcome not very well done but by uh, by a bot that will tell you okay you can chat with me it's a very stupid object uh, that will never understand you but uh, uh, okay it the problem is here that that functionality is mostly disconnected as you find it in the main website disconnected from from what the website is doing it's just a support channel so if you are doing a support website it's okay but if you're doing a gaming website uh, the, the the support chat really doesn't fit it's a separate functionality so let's try to think of function an application where really some voice interaction is useful gives uh, an added value makes it better okay of course uh, it shouldn't be all the website as i said with voice only some functionality which is which improves it hmm? uh, you can choose freely the target user population and uh, depending on the population you choose you also define which is the devices that are used so where is uh, this application going to run on a desktop on a mobile on both on a tablet well, it depends okay if it's for somebody on the move of course it needs to be some mobile friendly web application if it's something for uh, office worker uh, maybe you can assume a desktop setting or something like that okay so the actual devices that you are targeting in your application depend on the target population and why do we care about the devices uh, because the interactions are different the all the actions that you can do on a desktop interface are different from what you can do on a mobile phone and so yeah, okay you can use it on the other platform but doesn't feel designed specifically for that hmm? so since the interaction is our main focus let's try to be focused on that you can do both of course and or okay so you can be an application that can be used maybe both on desktop and mobile and maybe on mobile only some functionality will be applicable or depends on the, uh, the application of course huh? it's very difficult to make a specific example there are some topics that we want that we don't want to see they are listed in the next slide uh, we call them taboo topics because they're boring because we already saw them millions of times eh? so let's try to be more creative and um, okay try something that can be shown publicly and uh, so on. you know what i mean and um, and uh, okay this is important this is the last one is a technical point uh, of course every application should have some data stored somewhere okay the data can be stored on a server so we are we are focusing on the front end right on the interface 
but the interface for presenting data must read this data from some backend. So you will need to implement some part of the backend, of course, too. How to do that? Uh, it's your choice. You can choose to implement the backend your, uh, on your own. So um, a database uh, on your server, which whatever language you, are, you hate less uh, uh, for implementing the, the server side, or use some uh, APIs on the web for storing, now today they call it serverless development, uh, uh, something even might be simple like Firebase where you can store information on a website with the credential and then you can retrieve it. So you have a database for your application, but you don't need to deploy your own database. So it's your, it's your choice. Of course, some, some backend is needed. Uh, you can create your own or use some cloud services. Okay. If what I said uh, right now is uh, unknown to you, we can just tell us and we'll try maybe to find some time to, to explain what this APIs uh, um, are, are available today. Okay, the topics that we don't want to see are in the list, in this list, uh, to the list, uh, which is very boring, a calendar, which is too complex, uh, uh, parking, ride sharing, dating, uh, chat, uh, because we already saw them in all the possible forms and, and methods. Discussion, discussion forums, uh, which nobody uses anyway, and uh, or a, a copy one by one of popular applications. You can get inspired by some application, but you you should recreate your own, which is better. Okay, try to improve it. Of, of course, these are not totally you no know, uh, topics to avoid. Uh, they should not be the main topic of the project, but of course, a project can include some. I know uh, to do list uh, as a part of a bigger picture or maybe some events event uh, uh, scheduling but it's not should not be an event scheduling application but another application you know for setting I don't know um, sports or, or study um, groups uh, and then of course you need to, to fix a date and so some date functionality should be needed but should not be the main functionality there Okay. Of course, uh, you may have ideas. Uh, you may want to <laughs> to discuss these ideas with us. So maybe you can do that uh, in the at the end of the classes, not too late, uh, or uh, on, on Slack. Uh, saying, okay, is this idea good, uh, or should I modify it, or is it, uh, or does it fall outside uh, the topic? Hmm? What you pro what you produce is not a final product we already said that but it's a prototype of the class that we called interactive prototype so it's not just uh, you know the designers call a prototype uh, a powerpoint presentation with some made up screenshots okay well it's not enough for us we want actually to see the interaction at work so the the prototype should be interactive in the sense that the user can try out some functionalities maybe not all the thousand functionalities that you envision but the core ones for implementing the core functionality of your application uh, but they they should work okay with all the interaction details uh, that we that you have designed hmm? so it's advanced in this part in this part uh, and again, designers, you always sometimes call interactive prototype something that you can click through and will give you a fixed series of pages. Uh, this is not what we want, of course. We want these pages to be really dynamically generated. Okay, so we, we want to learn some say, skills of the interaction designers, but always remember that we are computer engineers. Mm, we know how things work and how it makes things work, make it, make it working, hmm? not just simulate how it could look like, okay, to be sure also that it's realistic. So it advanced in the sense that when you type something, well, the real data should appear because we have database with the query and we get the real data that is needed in that screen. It's not pre-compiled or predefined. Uh, so in this implementation, but it's still a prototype, okay? So in this implementation, you can simplify a lot of stuff so 
so maybe all the boring parts like logging registration you forgot your password and so on that are mandatory for every website uh, we can assume that we don't need them okay you can put the link uh, on the page but you don't need to implement it let's start from the real interaction okay unless your application maybe is focused on the login process which is one real nightmare hmm, today passwords logins and so on. so maybe you have a solution on that of course that will be the core feature but the, the, the message here is try to ident every web application or mobile application or whatever has a lot of functionalities but some of them are the core are the reason why the people are going there not to log in not to really help not to contact for support to post a picture of a cat or something might be more intelligent than that and uh, so that is the reason so that the core fu the, the core functionality let's try to develop that as closely as possible and forget about the rest so it's not complete uh, as a website but it's a uh, very detailed uh, as a prototype on that features for the technology you can use what you want so we assume that you should be familiar with the html and, and a bit of javascript and so on you probably have different level of knowledge or skills uh, on these topics uh, which is totally okay because maybe somebody you know just learned that and apply them in the course some other people maybe are already making a living in doing websites for for some customers or whatever uh, so of course there will be a range of skills there or uh, or a range of preferred uh, frameworks or languages it's fine the focus again is not on development but it's uh, on the interaction that you develop okay uh, of course there will be a minimum level to be able to create something that is working that can be interacted with but then you can uh, maybe choose the backend technology as you like uh, choose the front-end frameworks if you know one if you like and so on okay keep them simple hmm? so then don't try to to put too much technology there because the one of the messages of uh, prototype developments uh, is that prototype should be quick and cheap so if, if you spend enough money or uh, as much money for building a prototype as for building the complete system you are doing wrong hmm? so maybe may the complete system we go the complete the final system will have many more details and many more complex issues to to deal with and so we need probably probably maybe more complex frameworks or libraries but the prototype should be faster to develop because maybe after building the, the prototype you understand that something is wrong with your design that's the whole point of having an intermediate check checking whether i'm doing things or something right and as you know when i do some checks the answer can be yes or no and if no i should go back one step and try to redesign or think what i did wrong but this should not cost too much this iteration otherwise i won't do it i already invested too much to get here you know the, the guy from the wget uh, interface i spent a lot of time i'm not going to change it uh, we we need to avoid this trap hmm? and uh, okay so you use your skills and try to of course to follow the I didn't know how to write the best practice of web development so don't do don't do something that screams that for which we have to scream at you say what is this this is ugly this is terrible this doesn't work uh, and so on okay and uh, it's not just uh, usability but it's a minimum <laughs> level of uh, a website that it work okay about the milestone the intermediate steps or these deliverables that we are talking about we divide the work uh, in different uh, milestones different steps there are some points during the development where we want to stop and check what we did with strict deadlines hmm? so there is one day in by which you have to to submit uh, a, a document a deliverable and the, the document that you submit uh, will be evaluated as a part of the exam hmm? i realize now that they mix the terminology i call them deliverables in one point and the milestones in another milestone is the event and the deliverable is the document you submit in that event okay um, 
the milestone will follow the lab content so actually lab number five corresponds to the second i don't know i don't remember the number exactly to the second uh, milestone and at that point you have to submit uh, the document um, usually the last lab uh, it also for asking questions about uh, the deliverable and uh, after the submission we'll give you some uh, some feedback so we will submit the deliverable on github and we'll give you feedback on github itself so we open a, an issue with our comments uh, and we'll try to schedule some discussion time usually in the second hour in the lab probably we'll use that hour uh, for if you have further questions about your feedback or about your deliverable we can discuss it in the in the week after the, mm, the deadline uh, milestone will be a very simple uh, markdown document so text documents in markdown that you position in your repository in a, in a directory that will specify and uh, we'll pre uh, prepare a template uh, to follow so that all the deliverables are you know uh, uniform in form uh, with, the, with the in structure and easier to read and also for you easier to to, to write hmm? so we'll try actually you know, to have all these processes make sense we are adding steps to the development process and these steps should not be too heavy otherwise uh, they defeat the purpose so the, these are the milestones that we propose uh, milestone one is week three now we are in week one two three uh, you need to submit a project description and uh, need finding the project description actually is something that probably you should have already when you form the group okay when you form the group you already have some idea so i will ask you already to give a title to the topic that the work uh, that the group will work on okay but this is the real time for formalizing the description of the project and the first step of the process which is the need finding step so the requirements for this application coming from the users is the first topic of the course actually right now all these words uh, don't have a lot of meaning for you uh, so the first step is actually un understanding what the user want in that domain then the second uh, we are one month week three to seven to work on uh, prototyping a first non-interactive prototype and that will integrate some uh, rules of usability um, you know for if i had to to build uh, a new navigation system for a website so i say website with many sections i need to create the, the menu there's a, there are there are millions of way of ways to do that huh? for example you put the menus in the four corners or at the bottom no you never saw that or in a in a carousel no the menus are on the bottom of the title in a horizontal way or sometimes in a vertical way in the second level so there are two ways of ensuring that something is useful usable one is asking to the user involving the users making it they well, making user test it and then we learn from testing uh, what is working and what is not working and the other way is uh, trying to use information that we know is working you already know that the menu should be there and the the uh, website logo in the top left and the search is in the top right and the contact information is, the, is at the bottom is there a rule for that no is there a law for that no it's a heuristic we know some things uh, uh, work by experience by our experience by other people's experience by copying others and there are also lists of uh, heuristics that will help us in determining how to design something so we, we don't have to start from zero every time we can import them so heuristics are useful for designing and for evaluating so maybe you can see a, um, an interface and say this is not going to work we don't need to involve some users i already know that it's not going to work because 
there is this and this and this rule which are not followed hmm? so we need to, to learn a bit of this it's a, a never-ending set of rules okay so let's so start from the first most important one the next step in a couple of weeks uh, is uh, well the skeleton is actually uh, um, a set of uh, stages of your application so a sort of the navigation plan the different screenshots and uh, uh, the implementation plan means the implementation plan so what are the stages that you did you need and the technology that you need for implementing that and uh, and finally at the end of the course week 14 is the last week uh, uh, we have a lot of time here you see nearly half of the course uh, for implementing the system and uh, doing some user evaluation so we'll ask you for doing some real evaluation with with, with real users maybe an, a small number not a hundred of, of persons or maybe this, so some some units uh, of people and and then present the results some bit the results of your evaluation that you did do it with your prototype on the users but to begin we need to create the groups so the first step which is you know milestone zero preserve the computer and uh, submit a group composition so i created a google form in which you can list uh, the names of four people and the title uh, may be a description of the idea this too depends on how clear ideas you already have so a title is a tentative title a provisional title you can modify it later in the deliverable one but it already gives us some idea what you are thinking so if you are thinking something you can write it here already so we can start evaluating it before the formal let's say deadline of the of week, uh, week, uh, week number three the deadline for this is uh, october 10 which is not uh, uh, chosen randomly but is the same day as, as the first lab so we will have the first lab the first hour and a half and well where you have to do some exercise in the lab and then we have the lab for our, for us for you maybe you can stay there and discuss and submit uh, work together for su submitting this okay of course you are not forced to, to stay in the lab but there's since people are already there probably in the second hour you can stay and, and work on this hmm? so on the same day you can have the submission so that for the beginning of the next week uh, we can see uh, or fix uh, some groups uh, or see if there are some problems with other groups okay this is the link on the slide you will find the link for submitting your group composition on google forms it's a bit uh, early but nobody's complaining probably if you have any questions <coughs> no so thank you for this evening and we'll see you tomorrow in a better time than the, the light late night <laughs>